Hi, I'm Corey with Brewbilt. Today we're going to do a quick show off of the new X2 jacketed conical, run through some of its basic features and the basic assembly. Here we go. So beginning the assembly of the X2 conical, best way to start is to flip it over and go with the neoprene first. So making sure you've got the front and the logo pointing towards the front of the conical. Just slide the whole top opening over the legs. Making sure it's clean there and just start pulling it down. So you've got your glycol ports on the side. Make sure you pull it over those so you're not gonna cause any ripping to the neoprene or anything like that. Then come around to the front, kind of pulling up everything as you go and just keep moving it onto these flanges as you go. So at this point we've got all the flanges poking through the neoprene and taping up the legs as we go. And the cleaner you get this section, the less likely you're gonna have issues with condensation forming. You know, basically any section that's open to the environment when you start cooling it down, it's gonna start creating condensation. So it's worth taking your time at this point to make sure that you know everything's taped up kind of cleanly to the legs, everything like that. So, good enough for now. Since we still got it flipped over, we'll just start here and we'll go with the feet. All right, continuing the assembly, we'll get our thermal well here. And if you haven't used TC fittings before, they're fairly straightforward, but basically you need to make sure you've got a gasket that is the right size that fits into the flange on both pieces. So you'll get that fully installed like that. And then, you can get your TC clamp installed. So make sure it's fully around the fitting and then just hand tighten it. So here we're gonna be installing an end cap, but there are also a bunch of other options, carbonation stones, small heating elements, all sorts of things that we've got in the workshop as well. So look for some new releases for that too. On the bottom port, we've actually got a sample valve. And so the way this works, it's two-parter. And once it's installed, you can basically open that to get fluid flow out here. Put it on facing down, and same as all the other clamps. Go ahead and get that installed. At the bottom, we've got a two inch port as opposed to these other inch and a halves. So grab your butterfly valve, tri-clamp gasket, and your tri-clamp itself. The valve only opens one direction, so make sure that you've got the, the gear teeth facing downwards. Otherwise, you'll be trying to open it into your conical. And we included a two inch port at the bottom simply because it gives you a lot more room to dump trube. Make sure that there's not gonna be any uh, settling that can't make it through your dump valve. Uh, the flex chamber is a great way to see what's going on in your conical without actually opening it up, exposing it to air, etc. So just gasket, clamp, and you're good. Now, aside from being able to dump tube using this, we also sell a number of accessories to use these other ports for all sorts of different things you may need to happen. All right, so continuing with assembly, we'll move up to the lid. The ceiling system on this is gonna be a gasket and then a V-band clamp to hold it all together. So, gasket installation for the first time, you wanna pay attention to a few things. It's actually a bit larger than the lid itself. That helps make sure you've got a bit of extra material so that it can actually just make sure it's got a solid seal. And how you want to get this installed properly. Start at one point, pull it equally to the other side so you know that you've got half of the length on each side, and just stick it in right there. It's not going to stick very well, but just go to the other side. Basically what you're trying to do is make sure you've got the same amount of material at each section of the conical. So once you've got it in that far, you kind of just come around and push it in. You'll see it is a little bit too large for the conical right there. All you have to do is just kind of flatten it out and you're good to go. So at this point, it should actually hold in place. So you should be able to flip it over like that. First, just make sure that you've got your lid concentric. You know, that it's not too far in any one direction, that it's pretty centered on the body itself. And then grab your V-band clamp, pull it all around the unit. You can just use your hands at the front to hold it together. While you get that into the quick release system. Once you got it settled, go ahead and start clamping it down. 
and in your manual it'll tell you the exact distance to set this gap here. You want to be pretty close to it, uh, a little bit further won't hurt. So I generally just tighten it up pretty good. And come around, make sure it's all tightened down on all sides, which it should be, but just always good to do kind of a final check. And then at this point, we're good to start assembling the lid tri-clamp fittings. So for assembly of your pressure pack lid, start with the base unit here, grab your beer dip tube, which is your longer piece, feed it right there, making sure you've got an O-ring around it, and just drop it into place there. Your beer out, will be one of these pieces and it will not have a slash here. We'll show you on the gas what that slash looks like and how it denotes that it's the gas fitting versus the beer. So once you've confirmed you got your beer fitting, just go ahead and thread it right on top. Get a set of crescent wrenches and just make sure that's actually tight. And then we'll do the same thing with the gas fitting. And like I said, you can see the gas fitting has this little slash here, which indicates that it's for the gas side. And then your lid, has etching which says beer out versus gas in to tell you. Now this unit comes with a small piece of silicone tubing, a filter, and a buoy. And the way this works, go ahead and just slide the tubing over the barb there. Do the same thing on that beer out dip tube we assembled. Doesn't need to get too far, the vacuum will actually kind of keep it in place. So the way the pressure pack lid will work is you'll be drawing beer from about an inch below the surface, which is one of the clearest parts of the beer. And so as you start drawing, it'll constantly just be floating right at the surface until you get down to the bottom. And you'll be able to basically get clear beer out of it the entire time. For installation, we just go ahead and drop that in. Make sure you've got a gasket as well. Just sit that right on top. Same with all these, just another tri-clamp fitting, just a larger version of it. We're gonna continue with the lid assembly by putting on end caps to a couple of these ports. Now we sell a bunch of Brewbilt accessories, a fermentation pressure pack, a few different things which will allow you to drop hops under pressure, but we'll just go ahead and put end caps on these two ports for now. While these units are designed for pressure, they do not come with the equipment needed to do a pressure fermentation out of the box. They're set up for a blow-off style fermentation. And so it comes off the stainless steel U elbow. And so this way you have enough tubing to drop it into just a small you know, sanitizer bucket or something like that. You can see you've just got a barb at this end, silicone tubing. Just go ahead and plug that right on. So the PRV that's included on the lid is more of a backup system than anything else. You cannot trust this to keep your fermenter from overpressurizing during a fermentation. You will always want to make sure you either have a professional grade Spundig, like is included in our fermentation pressure kit, or doing a non-pressurized fermentation and having you know some port open to the environment. It's really just a backup redundancy to make sure that everything's safe. One of the major advantages of the X2 jacketed system is the actual jacket. And we're not talking about the neoprene here, we're talking about the secondary layer of stainless steel, which allows you to run glycol around your system without actually having any additional hardware to clean inside. It actually has these two ports here, and you might think that your glycol is just gonna be feeding right between the two, but we've set up a secondary buffer uh, that will actually force the glycol to flow all the way around your conical before being able to exit. And so this means that not only do you have a huge amount of surface area to cool down your internal volume, you also have a much less surface area exposed to the atmosphere, which will start heating it up. So you'll be able to get great cooling without needing to clean any secondary hardware inside, any coils or anything like that. And so it's just sanitary tri-clamp fittings, really easy to use. And then the neoprene jacket to cover everything up.